contrast is quite often one of the first adjustments we make to our scenes to add in richness and depth. Recall from the histogram video, I showed you how the contrast slider in the develop module will increase the separation of lights and shadows. And I'm using this photo from Bandon Beach as an example. You can see I've got a small amount of contrast added. And as I push that, we'll see the histogram stretch out a little bit. Now the limitation with the contrast slider is that you can see as I push it farther, those rocks become very, very dark very, very quickly. There are a couple of other tools in on one photo that do more interesting management of contrast. And these are in the effects module, dynamic contrast and the tone enhancer. We're going to take a look at both of those, understand how we can use those to apply different levels of contrast to our scenes. Let's have a look at the dynamic contrast filter first. This is one of my favorite filters. It's kind of a, I can't live without this filter in effects. But let's add a dynamic contrast filter to this scene. And notice that already it's adding a level of depth that we weren't getting with just the individual contrast slider. Now what's interesting about the dynamic contrast filter is we have controls that let us manage contrast in small objects, medium sized objects, and large objects. And the filter is interpreting our photo and finding the relative sizes of these various shapes that are in our scene. And so let's play around just a little bit here. Like for example, if we increase the small sliders, I'm gonna to expect to see much more detail in the individual rocks and some in the sand and the sky. So we can actually really kind of see it in this area right there. And if I return that to its default, we'll see that the rocks become a little softer. Medium has a more powerful effect because there are more medium sized things, the clouds, uh, certainly the rocks, and then large usually ends up being our most dramatic one. You don't have to push that as far because right now large will be kind of this whole entire rock and we can see around the edges, it starts to get dark and you'll notice we start to get that haloing effect. That's something to watch out for when you're using contrast. Usually if you see a halo around a boundary between a very dark object and light object, too much contrast is going to give you a halo effect. And unless that's the artistic look you're going for, that's one I usually try to avoid. So the natural look is a very good starting point for dynamic contrast. Now, one other question I get asked quite often is, well, why are all the tone sliders in there? There's exposure and blacks and whites and vibrance and so forth. Didn't I already set those when I was doing my basic processing? Now, the answer is really convenience. As you're adjusting contrast, maybe you notice, oh, my shadows have gotten a little bit too dark. Well, now you don't have to jump over to another filter or another module to change that one slider. It's there for you. It's a convenience. If you don't need to use them, that's totally fine. Now let's have a look at the tone enhancer. If you've used the On One products for a few years, you might recall the tone enhancer was the predecessor. It's kind of the grandfather of dynamic contrast but it still is useful and has a couple of different looks that it can give to your photos. So let's add a tone enhancer here and turn off our dynamic contrast. Now the sliders, again, you have all of the convenient sliders of exposure highlights and so forth. The ones I want you to pay attention to are the detail sliders, detail and clarity. The detail slider will increase the local contrast inside of large shapes, inside of objects, where the clarity slider is looking at the edges of things. So let's take a look at how these two different sliders work. So if I increase detail, let's watch the rocks here. Let's pay attention to this rock right here. And as we increase detail, we're going to start to see the insides of that rock become more prominent. Now, if I reset that, and now I'm gonna increase clarity. Well, clarity, we don't see that same effect, right? We don't see things changing in here. There's a bit of a crispness being added to the edges, but that's all. So if you're looking to increase uh, contrast inside of an object, you want to be working with the detail slider. Clarity will work around the edges. So that's the difference between the two. Now, there's still one other trick that the tone enhancer has up its sleeve for us, and that's curves control. We saw this in the curves module when we talked about tools. Let's have a look at it in action. I'll open up the curves panel, and here let's, let's add a, a traditional contrast curve. We'll 
bring our shadows down a little bit and we'll bring our highlights up a little bit. So I'm kind of pulling down at the low mid tones and pulling up at the high mid tones and we get a little level of contrast there. Now we can see the shadows have gotten you know, much too dark. That's just not, not looking very good. We can adjust that. We can say, all right, I don't want those, those shadows to be too dark. Maybe I'll have these upper mid-tones dark. I'll add a third point and pull back so that I'm not crushing the shadows too much. And now that's starting to look a little better. And it's an additional control, right? If I were to uh, reset the panel, let me undo that can see that there is uh, quite a bit of change in the scene. Now a side effect, because uh, the way I'm using this, is uh, that the highlights in the sky have gotten in too blown out. But that's okay. Why? We have access to masks. We have access to the blending options. We have uh, many different controls that we can rein in different areas of our sky and only have this applied to selected areas of our scenes. And that's most often how we're going to work with dynamic contrast and with the tone enhancer, except for perhaps like a, a blanket application of dynamic contrast, like with a natural setting across the entire scene. A lot of times you're painting in those uh, changes or you're using the blending options to control exactly what gets affected. So let's go through a couple of examples of seeing how that works. Let's continue with this tone enhancer. So I mentioned that we're getting some blowout up in the sky here. And that's really courtesy of this particular uh, curve adjustment. So if I, I can start nudging that down and we can see, all right, it's, it's pulling back some, but let's say I wanted to keep that because I liked the look that was here. I've got a couple of choices. We can try some masking. I can grab a masking brush. Since I'm working with an effects filter, I'll use the effects brush. And let's say maybe an opacity of 50 or 60. I'll increase the brush size. The feather looks good. And we can start painting that contrast away from the sky area. And if I make a second pass, we'll, we'll get rid of even more of that contrast, or a third pass. And that's doing some for the scene, not a whole lot. Let's reset that mask. Another way we could approach it is with the blending options, and we could try to protect our highlights. We can slide the highlight slider up. Now, a trade-off with protecting with highlights, you know, if you want to use the blending options and not the masks, that's going to affect the entire scene, or at least the entire area where you're applying the filter. So in this case, when I pull that highlights protection slider up, I'm protecting highlights everywhere, not just the sky, everywhere. And so for this scene, I think the masking might be the better way to go and perhaps even go and visit some of those convenient sliders that we have here for dealing with highlights. So instead of doing that, let's put our mask back in there. We'll just do a quick mask through that sky area to pull back on the contrast. And then with our highlight slider, we can start to recover those highlights as well. And that's starting to get better. We start to see that hint of that cloud coming back into play there. I can do a second pass with my mask. And to round things out, let's take a look at this as well with dynamic contrast and how would we shape that particular filter to suit this scene. So we'll turn off our tone enhancer, collapse that down. Let's open back up dynamic contrast. And we had the natural setting everywhere. And so I liked that when we were starting to play with the small and the medium sliders, those rocks were getting nice and crisp and punchy. It was doing a little bit too much to the sky. So for this scene, since our shadows are really remanded to the foreground, there's not a lot of shadows up in the sky, we can apply this contrast to just the shadows. And now we'll take our range slider up and we'll start to see those rocks, those are our shadow areas, getting the contrast and nothing else happening in the sky. And that's looking really nice. And so for a scene like this, where we have a pretty well bounded set of shadows, we can apply to just those areas and get the look that we want. And if we liked that there was some contrast in the sky from dynamic contrast, we can always add a second filter and add that contrast in. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that. 
we'll add a second dynamic contrast filter. And for this one, since I don't really want double on the the um, the shadows, we can protect the shadows, right? And so we'll we'll dial that back on the rocks. And so we're not doubling up on contrast for these rocks. So this was the second filter before and after. The rocks are changing a little bit, but mostly it's the sky that is getting hit. So you can see we're starting to use a combination of these tools with the techniques of you know, applying contrast. We're using those blending options. We're using masking to help craft and shape these filters to fit our scene. So to wrap up this video, we've got several different contrast controls in On One Photo. We have our basic contrast slider in the develop module, and that's a good one to use initially. I tend to use a gentle amount of contrast there, and then I'll turn to the filters in effects, dynamic contrast or tone enhancer, to add even more contrast. And the dynamic contrast is the most intelligent of the filters for contrast, and it does a very good job of being balanced. And we can control small, medium, and large objects and how much contrast that they get in the scene. The tone enhancer, it still has its place. It's got the curves control in it, which gives you an extra level of control. And remember the difference of the detail slider versus the clarity slider. Detail will add local contrast inside of objects, and clarity will focus on the edges of objects. And lastly, do use the blending options and masking with these contrast controls. If you're adding contrast to things, those objects are going to appear sharper, crisper, and those will draw the attention of your viewer. And so if there are elements that you want your viewer to see, you want to be adding contrast to those selectively and really drawing them into your photo.